Ada is an AI pair programmer that you can run from the terminal. In this video, I want to download Doom by ID Software and using scripting capability, let's document that complete project automatically so that we can potentially turn it into a new version using a different programming language. I'm Appy Dave, let's get into it. So we can get started by heading over to Appy Dave on GitHub and we've got this Doom with Docs. Now what it is, is the original Doom software that I've just forked and I'm going to add documentation to it using Ada. So before we get started with the scripting, let's just run Ada and we'll use it from the terminal point of view. And what we'll do is we'll make sure that the repo has been added in. We'll check what's new in the new version. I like pressing yes to this every time I start Ada because it just gives me access to new capabilities and the new capability that I'm seeing here today is that there's a copy context where information from the Ada session can automatically end up in your clipboard that can be really useful. And I just want to find out what is this repo about. So what sort of code, what's it meant to do and let's just see what it comes up with. Now it's worked out that this is the 1.1 release on Linux of Doom and it's got a little bit of information about the code base. Now this cost money to do so we can see the cost here it's two cents and we're on the first part of the session. Now if you use the same prompt again you would hope that prompt caching kicks in and that we would reduce the cost but I ran this again with exactly the same prompt and if we go to the bottom we're still being charged two cents though we do have a little bit different information so just one thing to be aware of there so let's have a quick look at what we've got in the repo so we've got these four folders so this one called send serve if we go and click on the readme file it says it's something to do with a sound server open up the serve source and we read the readme file and it's something to do with a modem driver we read that and it's a IPX network driver and it looks like the main code is going to be in this area here. So we've got a bunch of old readme files going on with various information about the Doom game. So where I think we'll start is we'll go with the simpler folders and just generate some simple documentation in a readme markdown file using Ada. So we're in the terminal and we've got this IPX directory here. And what we'll do is we'll come down to terminal, type in Ada and we'll put in message and what we'll say is create a readme file and after that we just need to put in the location of the file so I'm just going to say readme md and we'll press enter and let's see what it generates for us now while that's happening we'll bring up Visual Studio so we've got this new file being created and let's just put it into a more readable format at the moment and it says here this directory contains the IPX networking implementation of Doom we've got an overview we've got features technical details and the historical note so we've got a bunch of information that it's gathered out on its own now let's see if we can improve that documentation by maybe reading each of the individual files and seeing if we can create something a lot more detailed so I have a little tool that I built for myself that allows me to see files and also the content and make them available for ChatGPT. So what we'll do is we'll just run it on the current folder and we can see all the files that are made up of the Doom software here. Now if we just bring it down to the IPX directory we should have C and header files and if we just put in a .h we should just have the header files. Now from there if I get rid of the dash f tree I'm going to get a list of those files plus their content and it's in the clipboard. And so what that means is if I just paste it in we've got there's the last file right there and the content and as we scroll up we'll have additional files going on so there's the third file and the content but let's format it so it's designed directly for ada now we already know that if we run ada from the command line with a message and a file it'll run against that but you can list multiple files but since we've got our new tool which is the gpt context what we'll do is we'll use it to find a bunch of files based on a wildcard and we'll just put in a format we'll say ada 
and I'll put in a prompt, tell me something interesting about this file. And what this is going to do is just construct the ADA command for me, put in the clipboard so we can test this out. Now, the ID software is not written in an encoding that works on my machine. So the first thing I'm seeing is a few errors as this comes through. And you can see here that even though we've got information, it's also dropped certain files. So what we'll do is we'll just run it again. And I'm just going to go to the beginning and I'm just going to put in this encoding option, which is part of the ADA, because I figured out that this would be the way that it would read it through. So now it's added the files and they're not being dropped and we're going to get clear information about each file. Now what I'd like it to do now is create some complex documentation just based on those four files and we'll put it into create documentation in ipx slash readme h.md and let's put in a more complex prompt here. So to get my more complex prompt, I just came over to Anthropic Prompt Generator, said create clear documentation about a single C file, aimed at a programmer who does not know C, and we end up with this complex prompt going on here. From there, I've just taken the complex prompt that's here and just turned it into a single line so that we can just paste it directly into our terminal. So we've got the terminal, create documentation in IPX readme, md and we'll just paste in all that information we're working on the four files and let's see what it comes up with so at the moment we've got a bunch of information being written hopefully we're going to see a new file get created in this location it looks like it's got the file name location correct but it's asking us to generate it so we'll say yes and now we have a new file we should be able to go into markdown format and see what that looks like and we've got a lot of complex data that's being created for us using the scripting process now i'm not going to make any claim that this is great information right now but what you can see is how we can write complex prompts iterate over multiple files and bring it back into one documentation file now i've come back to the gpt context command and i'm just going to change the pattern to the C files and I'm essentially going to paste in the same prompt except right at the very beginning I'm going to have it write out to the readme C rather than the readme H file and we'll let that generate the ADA command we can paste that in and it says ADA message create documentation in the IPX readme C MD file and so we'll just press enter on that now this may fail again with the encoding issues so we'll see what happens in moment it looks like it's working okay as we read through there we can see the doom c ipx setup and ipx net.c coming through so this is all the documentation that we're writing and it's finished we've got a file that's going to appear right next to the h file we can open it up go into a markdown format and we can see now a bunch of information about the ipx c files now what i'd like to do now is create a complete documentation readme for the c files in this particular folder so what we'll do is we'll go down to the gpt context tool and we'll just make sure we've got all the files listed they all look to be good let's see just how big this will be so i'm going to get rid of the format and it's going to give us both the files and the code we'll just paste all of that in so we've got 43,400 lines of code across all of those files if we go to the top we can see the files listed as well and this is important to know because this is your context and it's going to cost money so we're running the same gpt context command but this time i've said the format is ada and we'll put in the prompt here and what we'll do is we'll just come over and have a look at a prompt that says create documentation in the linux doom readme c file and then we've got this complex prompt that we built using anthropic prompt generator so we can see we've got a command ready to go ada message create documentation in the location we want we've got the complex prompt going on after that we'll just let that run and see what happens so many files have been added warning it's best to only add files to set you need for the chat well we do need them all it's a lot going on here and we can see here we've hit a token limit now this is a more than fair thing and we probably wouldn't want to run this many files through one lot of documentation generation anyway so what we'll do next is we'll just split it up into four separate parts so what we're going to do is look at all the c files that are in this particular 
directory and we'll iterate over all of them and just run ADAR on each file. Now one of the things to keep in mind is that if we do a git log we want to make sure that as we're iterating we're not creating a new commit each time because we probably want to do that at the end of the run. So let's assume we've got a starting command that looks like this ADAR and we don't want the commit so we said no auto commits. We've got a message and we're going to assume that some sort of file is going to come in. We want to write to the MD file and we want to base it off the incoming file. Do you want to create a new file? We'll say yes and we should get a new file just created here and now we've got documentation related to the file above. So we can see the individual file and the documentation related to it. Now, if we come down to the terminal and we do a formatted git log and we can see that there's one file ready to go. So if we did this in a loop, we would have everything ready for a single commit at the end. And I'll show you the ADA command for that later on. So what we have here is the file we just ran, which was ADA no commits, the message we want to a particular file using an input file. And what we'll do is we'll just paste in a loop so that we're just looping through all the files in that folder and we're just interpolating the file name with MD and we've also got the file name coming in. But let's make it a little bit more complex and we'll take this complex prompt that we did earlier and we will just go dash and paste that in as well and from there we should be able to run this and run the complex prompt and create a markdown file for every C file. So I kicked off the command we can see where the it starts here and so far it's run for about 15 minutes and we can see individual files being updated. Then it moved on here, it both created and opened the D items MD, so we've got that going on. And this goes on for quite a while. Then at one stage it decided to create files in a docs directory. Now it didn't always do that, it would sometimes do it in this directory and sometimes do it at the level of the original file. So that's just a change that's going on as we go. Now, if we just go to the bottom, it's still operating at the moment, so we'll just kick off the next one and we'll say yes. And this one looks like it's going to be created at the root level, which is where we want. In that instance, when it said open the file, I said no in this case. So we do have a little bit of control whether we create them or open them in your IDE. So for this one, we'll just say yes create the file. So I'll let it run to the end and then we'll see what's been created and calculate the prices. But let's check out a couple of metrics here. So we've got all these markdown files in various levels and that's quite concerning to be honest because we've got some at the root level. We've got some where they're meant to be, which is in where the code was. Then we've got a bunch that are in a subfolder called docs. And then we've got two that are at the root level plus docs. It seems like it generated all the markdown documents, but it didn't always get them in the right location. So what I've done is brought all the files into the docs directory. So if you go down to the chat history, you've got a whole lot of data that you can use to figure out various things. So I'm not sure whether there's a way to get the exact cost of the session. So there's 84 lines averaging around about three to four cents per call. We can see that the 84 calls cost $4.11 and I got that information from the chat history now if we look for the create new file we can see that all listed here for quite a while it's putting them into the right location and then it just changes for about three files and then it goes into a high level dots folder for some reason and then we're back to where it's meant to be and then later on we've got a few examples here here and here where it's done it down at the root level so most of the time when it created a file it gave you the option to open it which is not something i actually needed it also from time to time would do a cat to the screen and then ask the question would you like to add it into the chat conversation now i'm not exactly sure whether this was going to be useful or not i don't believe it would be because i was on an iteration of looping through and calling ada each time so I'm not sure if it was in the same session. Then from time to time, we would ask to make a docs directory. So the interesting thing about doing this level of analysis is that there's an unpredictability to what was going on with the creation. Now we haven't looked at the documentation, so let's have a look at that next. Now Ada will normally take 
care of doing the commits for you but I said no commits so what we're going to have to do is just add them and commit them so what I want to do now is get a tree of all the documentation files that we've created under the doom folder plus the ones that we've got at a higher level from there we'll run this command one more time and we'll put in some sort of prompt that hopefully can create a broad markdown file that can take us to each of those documentation files so here's the prompt that we're going to use. We'll just run this. We've now got it all set up. We can just press paste and let Ada do its job of looking through all the files, creating a 10 to 15 word description for each file and putting it all into a table of contents. So we can see information coming. So I've just pushed the documentation up. We can see it here, code documentation. We click on that and we've got this long documentation table of contents going on with individual files. Let's just go and open up a couple of core systems. We'll do a rendering file, a game logic, and let's go down to a user interface. And as we go across, we can start to see the documentation going on for the core logic. And then there's a little bit of user interface face information going on here now I can't tell you whether the documentation is 100% or it's the right way to go. The main thing I'm relying on at the moment is that we can script to generate information on Bob. There was great information in these files such as just how it's meant to work as part of the whole system and also information for non-C programmers. Now that brings us to the end of scripting Ada from the command line. We've looked at single line calls, we've looked at how to do a prompt against many files at the same time and also how to loop through files. Now in the next video I want to look at a programmatic way of working with Ada. Now one of the things that we can see from the documentation here is that they have an unofficial way of communicating with this using Python. So hopefully we'll explore that in the next video. I'm Happy Dave, please like and subscribe and I'll see you soon.